Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amudan Shaktivel, and in this playlist, we are going to see how we could use Playwright with TypeScript. Yes, TypeScript. This is the first time I am making video about TypeScript, but it's been very long time that I started to use Type uh, TypeScript in my uh, you know office um, for both writing service tests and also some unit tests. Uh, coupled with some some small backend and uh, front end changes so so i'm really glad that i that i have time to start this particular series and i hope you will enjoy it uh, without wasting much time um i want to showcase how easy it is to create playwright automated script uh, be it any language for now right i will cover why i have chosen typescript over all the other bindings uh, that we have with playwright right in the, in the upcoming videos but for now Let's just understand how easy it is to create automated script. If you are a beginner and you are trying to uh, kick start with your automation journey, or if you're a manual tester and you want to get started with your automation journey, I think Playwright is the best tool. Uh, then Serenium, uh, you will understand why. And uh, without wasting much time, let's go to the uh, workspace, right? So don't worry about anything. Don't worry about the setup. Don't worry about anything. Uh, just enjoy how Playwright can help you to write quality code so just run this command npx playwright code gen um, code gen is stand for you know generating code or whatever um, and then if you run this command it gives you a beautiful uh, little tiny thing here called as playwright inspector and then the browser window itself so whatever you want to do is you can go ahead and mimic the soft uh, user flow in this particular browser for example in my case uh, what i want to do is um, I want to get this uh, demo website or in the charm and uh, I want to put it here, right? So I want to navigate the, to this particular URL and then you can see this tiny little thing started to record whatever that I do here. So it it pays, you know, as soon as we paste it and click on enter, it says a white page dot go to and then the URL that we want to load. And that's how easy it is. So it started to record whatever we want to do. So now, I, I I click here and then I enter the username, this admin, and you can see there is a small little uh, thing that coming get by placeholder username, and that's the particular strategy it uses to to locate that particular element and interact with it, right? So you don't have to find elements by yourself. This code gen capability of Playwright can do that for you. And believe me, I come to why this get by placeholder is better than using name, IDs, and and experts and whatnot like i'll come to that particular thing in the upcoming videos but for now just go ahead and perform the user journey click on login button and what i want to do is i basically want to uh, you know uh, log out like maybe if you want to even validate something here let's say i want to validate uh, something so if you notice there is a small little icon here i button and then you can click on it and then you can say uh, dashboard. So now it got it got, it has also added an assert statement here or the expect statement um, a heading and it checks for dashboard to be visible. Okay, I'm done with my assertion and I want to log out now. Um, you know what you can do is you can see how it is finding the element. So get by text, first name and last name. Okay, if you know the first name and last name, that's that could be a good locator. But in my case, let's see if I could find any better locator. Uh, this uses span locator of I. Okay, uh, but I, but it is not really good practice to use this HTML uh, uh, tag dependent stuff like I spans and all that. So we will try to avoid as much as possible, if possible. Um, so let's go ahead and see what's this here. So this uses there is a banner and I there is an image uh, with the name of profile picture. I want to click on that. And then I want to click on a menu item called as logout. And then that's it. And then I also want to make out whether the logout is successful. So I just check whether this uh, thing is here or, or I could see whether this has um, forgot your password, whatever. Like you could do assert that elements contain text, forgot your password, yes. So you could add all these things, right? So once that is done, uh, you can you can basically stop the recording here, right? Um, that's it guys so we are done with the our test our test is ready and again if you are using any other language also you could just so i'm using node.js with test runner which is which is what i recommend all the time but then if you want to also convert this code to java you could also do that but here 
question. Let's go ahead and choose test runner and simply copy this code. Again, copy pasting is very simple stuff. And let's go here and then put the code here, right? Everything is done. Now I simply run a, another command. So I will just do this, create a new terminal, um, whatever. And here, so there is a test folder inside that there is the my my test that spec.ts. I want to run the test block. Uh, so test block here indicates there's a test case. I want to run all the test case that's here, right? So let's try to run it and see what happens. So the hyphen hyphen header indicates that I want to show the show the UI here. Since this is all your might be your first test. So seeing a UI might give us a lot of confidence. That's it. The test run. But I also if you notice um, it shows if you want to see the report, okay, you can you can run this command. So so it says to open last HTML report run. You run this, okay. Let's also do that. And here is this. So so should log in and log out, and then it goes here, uh, performs clicks, filling, you know, whatever. And then if you notice, there is also the video recording for you in case you want to debug if there is some defect and all that. So, so it's pretty cool, right? So it automatically does everything, um, you know, without doing a lot of efforts. And that's what school about playwright. So I go back and also see, you know, the, the code that, that it generates might not be, uh, you know, reliable all the time, at least, but at least reliable 90% of the time. For example, here, you don't need this click. You can directly fill the value. Uh, but then I prefer to click and fill because that's how an, an user might really interact with it, right? Uh, so so you can also keep it. it. It's up to you how you want to do that. Um, and then let's say uh, the user might see a login button, right? A roll of button, login, right? So, uh, and then click on it. So mostly it, it revolves around how an user would interact with an application. For example, get by placeholder indicates um, so you have this placeholder here and you are finding the what what the real user might see. You are not relying upon CSS, XPath, which 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 the end user might not really use to interact with an application. So this is a wonderful way of writing your test. And this is what even I told in Selenium also, try to use um, locating strategies that how a real user might interact with it, right? So yeah, that's all about it. I hope you started to like Playwright. But then we will cover it from the basics. What is Node.js? What is Playwright? How to get started? How to write your first test and all that in the upcoming videos. So uh, if you are new here, subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave your comments in the description. Um, I'll see you guys in another great video. Until then, tada bye guys from over there. Bye guys.